now we're going to come to the question that gets so many students in the exam, and that is your calculus, your cubic graph. Do you know, if we are asked to sketch the graph, then everybody gets that. If you just want to listen to me quickly, if you are asked to sketch a graph, then you're going to do the shape, the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, and the turning point. Those are the four steps if you sketch a graph. Now, everybody seems to be okay with that in sketching the, the cubic graph. You're all getting those marks. It's 12 to 13 marks, but you're not always going to be asked to sketch the graph. You are sometimes going to be given the graph. Like in this supplementary paper, the students were given the graph. Last year's final paper, the students were given the graph. They weren't asked to sketch. So in your prelims and in your December and your November exam, if you are asked to sketch, you're going to follow the steps, the shape, the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, and the turning point. Those are the four steps, right? But what if you given the calculus graph, like this question that I have here this afternoon? I just checked if anybody have questions, but it's still okay. Everybody seems to be okay. And now we're going to this question where they give you the calculus graph and now they ask you questions. I'm going to try to go really, really slow because I know this is a section that pupils battle with. Send me your questions if you're battling. Okay, so we're on question nine. They say here, yeah, and I've tried just to highlight the graph here so that you can see it better. It says the graphs of f of x, the f of x is your cubic graph. I want you just guys to sketch this graphs there where, we, where you are, just to sketch this graph for me. Just draw your y axis, just draw your x axis, and it says the graph of f of x is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And that is your cubic graph. It is ax cubed, and I'm going to write it for you. You can do it with me. Your f of x is given as ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. That is your cubic graph. Back to the sketch. And your g of x is given as 6x minus 6. Now look at the graph. I am going to give you a minute just to draw these graphs quickly. Draw your y-axis, draw your x-axis, and I am going to talk you through the graph while you're all sketching it. They say that A is negative 1 and 0. Put that on your turning points. Everyone, put that on your turning point there. And then they say that C is 3 and 0. Put that on your x-intercept. That is the x-intercept. C is an x-intercept. It is 3 and 0. And A is negative 1 and 0. Now, I want you to think with me. Take this in this afternoon. I want to ask you something. Can you see that A isn't just an x-intercept? It is also a turning point. Oh, my word. It's a x-intercept and it is a turning point. Can you see that? Then the point C is just an x-intercept. That is what they give you. I'm trying just to lead you to what they're asking. They say the graph of f, everybody remember the black graph that I highlighted is f. The graph of f has a turning point A. Remember I said it's a turning point as well as an x-intercept. And its other turning point is here at B. Do you all have the graphs in front of you? Did you sketch it, everyone? Okay. Then it says D here is 0 and negative 6. Put that on your sketch. It is the y-intercept of your black graph. And they say that E and D are the points of intersection. What does intersection mean? The position where the two graphs intersect. There's our information. What is the first question that they ask us? They say, show that A is 2, that B is negative 2, that C is negative 10, and that D is negative 6. I'm going to write that for you. They say, show that A is 2. Got that? B has to be 
negative 2, C has to be negative 10, and D has to be negative 6. Whoa, now many of you look at this question in the exam and you say, ma'am, what in the world? What must I do? I can know how to sketch. I can sketch these graphs. But I don't know what's going on here. What are they actually asking me? I really, really don't know what to do. Okay, now can we take, can we break it up slowly? If they say show, if you see something in the paper that says show or prove, do you know that they asking you to find the equation of the cubic graph. They are asking you to find the equation. So just look at this, right? They've given you ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. This is the cubic graph. Now they want you to show that a is 2, b is negative 2, c is negative 10, and that d is negative 6. So grade 12, what they're actually asking you is to find the equation of the cubic graph. Now how do we do that? Okay, look at my graph. I have one x-intercept, I have another x-intercept there, but at the same time, my x-intercept is also a turning point. So you need a formula in order to find the equation of the cubic graph. Come, I show you what you're going to do. You are going to use the formula that says, remember, f of x is y. y is equal to a x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2, multiplied by x minus x3. Now, many students take the x1 as root 1, root 2, root 3. It is the position where the graph cuts the x-axis. So, can you see? This would be a root, and that would be a root. But you're going to say, ma'am, you've only got two roots. How come you have three roots. Now comes the biggest thing I think this afternoon that you need to take in. I don't want you to phase out and I don't want you to talk to your friends next to you. I want you to focus. That turning point, do you see this x-intercept is also a turning point? You repeat this bracket two times. So you are going to say you don't have a, remember you have to prove a x what is this x-intercept here? Minus 1. But because of that minus, it becomes a plus. Because the x-intercept is being is also a turning point, the x-intercept, can you see I wrote here, the x-intercept is also a turning point, grade 12. You write that bracket again. I hope you all get that. And then your last bracket, so this is this bracket, that is that bracket. The last bracket, the last x-intercept that I have is c, which is 3 and 0. Remember, you all wrote this down. You sketched the graph before I started. It's a 3. So I am going to say that is a negative x minus 3. I hope that you get that. You know, if you have 3 x-intercept, you can see 3 distinct x-intercept. Distinct means three different x intercept then you just put them each in a bracket but now i saw the turning point is also a x intercept so that bracket you always write out two times all right so now when i write out that remember what's your goal my dad always asked me i don't know what's your goal what is your objective you want to show that a is two b is negative two c is negative six and c is negative ten and d is negative six what do i do now now you think, okay, I need to find A, right? So I need to substitute something in the place of Y, and I need to substitute something in the place of X. So you go back to your sketch, and you go and look for a point on the graph. Look with me. Do you have E? No. So you can't use E. Can I use A? No, I've used it already in my equation. Now you go, oh my word, I've got another point. It is D. This 0 is X and the negative 6 is Y. So if I see the X, I'm going to substitute it with naught, and the negative 6 goes into the place of Y. Negative 6 into the place of Y. I'm looking for A. What is X there, everybody? X is naught. You put your plus 1 down. X is naught. You put your plus 1 down. And 
that x is also 0. Replace all the x by 0. And you have negative 6 is equal to a. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 minus 3 is minus 3. And what do you get here? 1 times 1 is 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 times a is negative 3a making a equal to 2. Isn't that beautiful? And that is what we had to find. We saw that a had to be proven to be 2 and I did that. Now how do you get b to be negative 2, c to be negative 10 and d to be negative 6? That's the easy part. All you do is you take your 2 and you substitute it into the place of a. So come do that with me. It becomes y equal to a is 2. That's x plus 1 multiplied by another x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3. And grade 12, all you do is you're going to remove your brackets. Remove your brackets with me. That's foiling. I'm first going to do the first two brackets. It's x squared plus a x plus another x gives me 2x and I times the 1 out and it gives me plus 1. Now I am going to just multiply these two brackets out. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared times this by that gives me 2x squared this times that gives me negative 6x. Are you all still with me? 1 times x is x and 1 times that is negative 3. Collect your like terms matrix and you have x cubed which doesn't have a partner. Negative 3x squared plus x squared gives you negative x squared. Then that negative 6 plus the 5 gives me negative 5x. Negative 3 doesn't have a partner. We're nearly there. I'm going to take my 2 into my bracket and I get 2x cubed minus 2x squared. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10x and last but not the least I get negative 6. And now you have your equation. Isn't that beautiful? Your a is equal to 2. Your B is negative 2. Your C is negative 10. And your D is negative 6. And that is what they asked us. What a long sum. And you know that sum in the paper was 5 marks. And I'm sure that you all got, got that. Now you know what, just before I go on to the sum, just recap quickly with me. I have to, if I have a turning point, I repeat that bracket. I repeat that bracket and I have two brackets that is the same x-intercept and you just write your last x-intercept down. 